In this video, I'd like to introduce some of the terminology and concepts we'll use to describe the building blocks of organic chemistry. And our goal here is really to begin to look at Lewis structures in the new light of pattern recognition. So we want to see different Lewis structures as incarnations really of the same sorts of phenomena. In order to do that, we're going to develop what I call the generalized building blocks, which are general collections of electrons around central atoms that are just general. We'll just draw the central atom as X. And then we'll see how these generalized building blocks map onto the particulars that we actually find in Lewis structures. By connecting two different Lewis structures to the same fundamental generalized building block, what we'll see is that structures that look different on the surface actually behave very similarly owing to their underlying similarities and the patterns that recur in different types of structures. For this first lesson, we'd really like to understand Lewis structures as built up from component building blocks, what I refer to as either building blocks or atomic fragments. I'll use these terms sort of interchangeably. But what is a building block? Well, in a nutshell, it's a central atom, let's just call it X, surrounded by electrons, and that's it. And the electrons that we can use to surround the central atom are bonds, lone pairs, or unpaired or radical electrons. And so an example of a building block might be two single bonds and a double bond associated with the central atom X. Now, there are some terms and concepts associated with the building blocks that will help us see similarities between apparently different structures. And so I'd like to go through those now, the first is what I call the total electron count. The total electron count is the total number of electrons around the central atom, counting both electrons of all of its bonds into that calculation. So for example, in this building block that we drew before, we see that there are two electrons associated with each bond for a total electron count of eight. And the total electron count concept is most important for understanding the octet rule, which tells us that the total electron count around building blocks in organic structures is typically eight or less. And most commonly, it turns out that the total electron count is eight. Now, for building blocks that have fewer than eight electrons, we can understand these, for instance, this one here with the total electron count of just six, as being good electron acceptors, or what I'll refer to as electron sinks. On the other hand, something that has an excess of electrons, maybe a total electron count of eight with a negative charge, can serve as an electron source in a number of cases. And so total electron count helps us see the octet rule and helps us identify electron sources and sinks. Now there's another way to count electrons around the central atom, and it's what I refer to as the valence electron count. And I call it this because we can imagine that it's the number of valence electrons that the central atom sort of brings to the party, right? So for instance, let's look at another example of a building block, three lone pairs and a single bond around the central atom. The total electron count here is still eight, but the valence electron count, or VEC, takes into account only one electron from each bond. If we imagine, say, the two atoms, X and A, coming together from oblivion, we can imagine that A brings with it one electron, and X brings with it one electron. And so the valence electron count of X, which includes only one electron from the single bond, is only seven here. And valence electron count is most useful for the concept of formal charge, which you're probably already familiar with. The valence electron count around an atom within a Lewis structure tells us what the charge on that atom is within the Lewis structure, at least formally. And so imagine that we had this building block and the central atom was oxygen. Oxygen normally has six valence electrons around it. In this case, the VEC is seven. And so six minus seven tells us that the formal charge around oxygen in this structure is negative one, for example. And so the valence electron count is useful for that. And here again, we can identify electron sources and sinks 
very important concepts here, electron sources and sinks by laying down formal charges and imagining how those might react. In this case, this oxygen atom is a dead ringer for an electron source. 